Hello, everyone. Welcome to the World Baseball Coaches Convention. My name is Ryan Fuller, and I'm the co-hitting coordinator for the Baltimore Orioles. I'm also the AA hitting coach. And more than anything else, I just really appreciate everyone hopping on and spending time listening and learning with me. And today we're going to dive into an area of player development that I think we're really under serving our athletes in. And that's what we're actually doing in the cage. And you could see from the title, what are we actually preparing for? And hopefully our answer is the same for the competition of the actual game rather than just looking good in the cage. So today we're going to dive into the what, why, and how of cage routines. And with that, once we have a good understanding of what we do, why we do it, and how we go about doing it, build out a plan for a specific player type. So with that, we're going to start with asking a lot of questions and hopefully getting better answers. So first of all, are we all the same? That should be an emphatic no. Just looking at Jose Altuve, Aaron Judge here, we could see that first of all, their body types are incredibly different, okay? The length of their limbs, Aaron Judge's legs go up to Jose Altuve's chest here. So we could see that length of arms, length of legs, body type, incredibly different. Each player is gonna be mobile, stable in different segments and parts, while others are gonna have different issues to tackle. Experience is gonna play a key role here. What a 13 year old is doing in a cage should be far different from a player in the GCL, also compared to a player in the major leagues. So we should obviously not be doing the same things in the cage based off of experience. How about just normal strengths and weaknesses? One guy is going to be working on pulling the ball more consistently. Another is going to be working to hit more line drives and get it off the ground a little bit more. So obviously, we're all working on something different. And finally, emotions. This is going to change at bat to at bat, day to day, year to year. So obviously, we're not all the same. We're ever changing. And obviously, our plan should include that. So the next question, what do we all do in the cage? And I feel very confident being in cages for the last decade that when you walk in, you see a father and a son, an instructor or another coach working with a player, you're going to see them probably start on the tee to warm up, maybe mix in some single hand work with a short bat or their bat. Then they're going to progress into easy flips with the coach just underhanding balls right down the middle. Then move into arm BP what we kind of say 40 from 40, 40 miles per hour from 40 feet away, right down the middle. And then if we're really feeling saucy, we're gonna use the machine, maybe gear it up to where it's just a little uncomfortable, but still an area where we feel good about barreling every ball up. So is that the best? I'm gonna prove that I don't think that's the best way of doing it, but for I would say 95% of people going into a cage, it's gonna be some variation of the four in front of you. So hitters equal snowflakes here, okay? Obviously no two snowflakes are the same and no two hitters are the same too. We are all different. We're all working to improve certain parts of our swings. As I stated before, every guy is gonna have a different flavor they're working on. So with that, why would we train the same? Why are we all gonna take the same amount of reps off the tee where the ball isn't moving right into easy flips where the ball's coming into the same spot more or less every time? no challenges being pressed on us and no areas being targeted for our specific needs. So let's do a case study quickly with two players. This is gonna be player A and we're gonna build out a progression for him in a little bit. He has an extreme negative attack angle. So the bat head working down into contact, he's gonna see a lot of flares to right field and a high ground ball percent. So standing very tall, throwing the hands down. He has no idea what it is to have some posture and hip hinge in a swing. So he's not getting into an athletic position to be able to put force into the ground and efficiency, efficiently sequence that energy up the chain. However, this guy has a big engine. He hits balls really hard. So we could see that with a few adjustments, hitting the ball on a line a little bit more frequently, he's going to have a lot of success. So let's go to player B, daddy hacks only, okay? On the flip side, his attack angle is way too high. So he's swinging uphill and not staying on plane as long as he should. 
he has a poor attacking posture. And what I mean by that is when we get to front heel plant, what a lot of people call launch position, his shoulders are already, already be pointing to the sky. So we could see that attack angle is gonna move on that shoulder line too. And unfortunately for this guy, he has real, really low exit speed. So for someone who hits the ball in the air at soft speeds, that's gonna to equate to a lot of outs. So we look at player A and player B, clearly two different things to be working on and addressing. Should these guys have the same routine? And Shannon Sharp says, absolutely not, okay? It's a disservice to these players to just say, hey, if you hit off the tee, if you do flips, you're gonna get better and not giving them any good information or awareness of what needs to be worked on. So before we start breaking down what a good routine looks like, let's ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Why is it so prominent that we do T flips and easy BP? And the first one is just somebody told you to do it. And usually this comes from someone at a higher level than us, whether that be a coach, a player at a higher level, where they say, yeah, I hit off the tee, I do flips, BP, and then that's how I get my work in. So when we're younger, we see other people doing a certain part of their routine and we pick it up. Secondly, it looks big league. We saw it on MLB Network, a big league player we really loved hitting off the tee. We say, man, if it works for him, it's got to work for me. That's what's going to get me to the highest level. Next is you just don't know anything else. So instead of going to the cage and feeling out of place, the T is really convenient. Okay. Somebody tells you, Hey, this is what a good progression looks like. This is what you should do in the cage. You don't know any better. And that becomes your routine out of necessity. And my favorite, it worked once been struggling at the plate. A buddy comes up to you and says, Hey, just hit off the tee today, okay? Slow things down a little bit. Just hit a few line drives and boom, you have a really good game. And now for the rest of your career, you said, I have to swing off the tee every single day. And some of the answers why we do what we do, but really no hard facts here of this is what I need to be working on. I know why I need to be working on it. And this is gonna be my progression moving forward. So what do we want it to look like? And first off, this is driveline tracks right here in the picture. This is free for any coaches or athletes, coaches who have under 20 athletes in their program. It's free. You can go in there, create your own progressions. So I, I highly recommend it for any facility owners or instructors out there. But what do we want it to look like? We want individualized routines made by the coach and the player. So this isn't the coach telling the player I made a progression you have to do this every day we want this to be a collaborative experience where the player knows what's happening why you're doing the certain drills and how they're going to get better because of them we definitely want to have movement prep in there a player should not warm up by swinging the bat they should get hot get their body and mind in the same page and work on those movement qualities that's going to help their swing before ever touching a bat Obviously, with our individualized progression, we want to work on areas of improvement, okay? So that player staying really tall, hitting a ton of ground balls, we want to see him hit more line drive. So it should be targeted toward that area. And we have to remember to be flexible here, okay? Because we make a progression in January doesn't mean we have to use it again in February, March, April. This could be, boom, boom. We made goals, we hit the goals we wanted to hit. Let's make out an, a new one in two weeks. So remember to be flexible here because you make a progression in the cage. It doesn't mean we're tied to it forever. So I want you to think about the progression you see with your guys in the cage, what they're doing and answer these questions as we go through. The first one is your cage work just proving what you can already do. I'm sure if you've been hitting off the tee for the past decade, you're gonna be really good at smoking the ball to the back of the cage probably nine or 10 times out of 10, okay? We wanna see desirable difficulties here. It should be challenging in our work because man, it's really challenging in the game. So making sure that it's not just proving what we're already good at, but targeting the areas of improvement as well. And with that, of course, are your weak areas being targeted? just doing T work and flips really is just swinging. Okay. So we could argue that it's just cardio here, but when we have specific goals 
drills for us based off of our areas of needs, we're gonna see ourselves get even better. And then three, which we're gonna progress to here quickly. And we alluded to at the beginning of the presentation, are you preparing for the nasty stuff that you're actually going to see in the game? And I feel very confident that most are going to have to say no to this one. <laughs> 